Today we're going to be talking about these two pens. These are Edison Collier Grandes and um, I say Collier, you might say Collier, that's also fine. There is quite a backstory to me and the Collier as well as the Edison Pen Company. It's all very positive, um, but I know that not everybody equally cares about personal stories. So what I thought I would do is first try to do the objective bit uh, in this uh, particular video, go over the parts of the pens, do the writing sample, and then in the likes and dislikes, I'll talk a little bit about uh, my initial experiences with Edison. This, in a nutshell, is the Collier Grande. The Collier Grande is a bigger version of, you never would have guessed, the Collier. So, there's some cool features here, especially on these, because these have a fancy fill-in system, as well as a number eight nib, so there's, I think there's quite a lot to talk about. Let's get started. Okay, so here we go with the Edison Collier Grande. Let's talk a little bit about this pen and then I'll show you some stuff about it. So these pens are from the Signature line. That means you can't purchase them from stores that sell Edison pens. You can only purchase these from Edison directly. And uh, this is the Collier Grande. That means that it is a little wider and also a little longer than the regular Collier and that it has a number eight nib. Only in steel at this point fine, medium, broad, I say at this point because I already saw that people had asked uh, about that on the Edison Pen website, uh, but that's, that's, so that's what we have. So right now this is, this is what, you, what you have. Uh, fine, medium, broad, steel nib, ebonite feed, and then you have a, there's a $325 price for a cartridge converter. You can ditch the converter if you want and just use it as an eyedropper filled pen. I have done that with my regular sized Collier. I can't show you that pen because I don't own it anymore, but on the Edison Pen website are side-by-side -side pictures of the Grande and the regular Collier models if you want to see uh, how much bigger they truly are. $325 and this one is $100 extra because I had Brian install a draw filler, uh, which I can show you and because I'm afraid I will forget, uh, I will do that now. Draw filler is a, a fun system. Uh, I will zoom in a little bit. Um, that works like this. You unscrew this bit. Don't be particularly nervous about cracking this uh, blind cap because look at how thick that is. That's really awesome. And here's the draw filler. So basically there is a piston. Uh, it's This pen is translucent. Let me see if I can rotate it so that I think this gives you the best view. This is kind of a clear piece. I'll try to not have the window reflect too much, but that's not that easy. Um, you see that? So there's a little piston in there that you just draw and that's what you do. So you put this in a bottle of ink and then you do that and again and again and every time you draw it there will be a little bit more ink coming into the barrel until it is full up to about this level. So this is how much ink and that holds about four milliliters of ink and that's a lot of ink if you uh, imagine that the standard cartridge converter like a, a standard international converter is about maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.9 milliliters of ink. So four milliliters is a lot. And I have found you will write for a long time, even though these are broad nibs, you write for a long time before this pen is empty. Now, there is a breather tube uh, in there. I'm just gonna unscrew this. A lot of silicone grease on there. There's a breather tube in there, which makes sure that it's above ink level. You keep drawing up ink as you operate that um, draw filler. So a simple system. What I really like about it, it's easy to maintain. As I, as I just showed you, you can uh, unscrew the section, put a little bit of silicone grease in there on a Q-tip uh, and make sure that it stays nice and lubricated. Uh, it's, I don't see this as something that would easily break. It's a very simple moving part. There's nothing that twists or turns. It's all very simple and straightforward. Okay, having said this, let's have a look at the box and other parts of the pen. So the, the pen comes in this box. It has a cardboard outer sleeve and then you have the actual box with the Edison pen logo, which I've always enjoyed. Edison, it's like a, it's like a little bulb, but then it's a nib and not a light bulb, but it has threads. Okay, moving on. This is what you get. Uh, you get this uh, cute sticker, Edison Penco, which I thought was really fun. You get a bookmark, 
uh, with a nib, which is very fun. I have definitely used these in the past quite a lot. You get this type of bookmark. So, I mean, you get a lot of fun little st things with it. There was even a little um, magnet, which is currently on my fridge, and I forgot to take that off, so I can't show you, but it's, it's a little magnet and that is nib-shaped. And then in its cute little bed would be your pen. Okay, so then let's talk about the pen a little bit more. I'll show you the parts. There's a little bit of a wire there. That's for my microphone. I'm sorry, I'll try to get that out of the way. There we go. Pen. Zoom in. And this is the pen next to a Pilot Metropolitan. So the Edison Collier, I still say Collier, but you could say Collier. The Collier Grande is certainly a big pen, right? But that's kind of implied by the name, isn't it? Anyway, this is the Persimmon Swirl finish. My first Edison had that finish. That's why I requested that. And then here we have the Tortoise Lucite, which I think is an absolutely beautiful finish too, because it's translucent and it's very, very warm. It's almost like ember, which I think is very, very nice. Okay, parts of the pen. I'm going to show you the parts of the pen on this particular model because it's there's no ink in it, so I won't dry out nibs or feeds or whatever. Top of the cap, exact same material as the rest of the pen, which I always love. And this, again, this really looks like ember to me. Then we have the clip. I've always liked the Edison clips. Nice and simple, with a little ball at the end. Tight, but very functional, so exactly how I would want a clip to be. Shape of the cap, slightly bulbous in the middle. <clears throat> and then if you rotate this, there is nothing else on the cap. Here we have the barrel. The barrel has an engraving. It does say Edison Penco Collier Grande, uh, and it's nice and subtle. So you can see it a little bit better, I think, on the uh, persimmon swirl material. But this is another thing I really like about this uh, tortoise lucite. If you want to see the engraving, you can, but if you don't really care, as you can see, it's not very obtrusive, which I think is nice. Okay, barrel tapers down, then you have that blind cap, which I have because this is a draw filler. Obviously, if you had a cartridge converter filled model, you would not be able to take that off, right? Okay, section, hourglass shaped, and I find this very comfortable. It's a larger pen and it does not post. I'll come back to that in likes and dislikes, but it does not post. But as you can see, this is not a small pen. Then we have the nib number eight engraved with the Edison logo, which I think is a very nice touch. And that, that seems to be an actual engraving. That's not a laser engraving, so that's kind of cool. Number eight nib with an ebonite feed, and this is a broad nib. I'm assuming the B on the back of the feed is for broad. Ebonite feed, steel nib, and, and that's pretty much all this to it. Currently, fine, medium, broad. Now, here we have a Magna Carta pen, and as you can see, I'm pretty certain this is the exact same nib and feed. And we're starting to see these steel number eight nibs on more and more pens. I think it's very cool. Steel is cheaper than gold, and so far the number eight nibs that were available were either Bok gold or titanium, uh, or they were Yovo number eight gold, and Yovo uh, discontinued making them as far as I know. So if you want a bigger nib, this is a relatively economical way of getting one, is what I'm trying to say. And that's what I have. So here we go. Now if you want to see the uh, persimmon swirl, uh, obviously, I mean, same pen, right? So, very, very similar. In fact, identical, except for the material. And the material is, is very nice. The persimmon swirl material is, is very attractive. It's uh, nice, chatoyance, very... Uh, I mean, look at that, right? Uh, that's very, very nice. Okay, let's write and then talk about likes and dislikes. I have here some Rhodia paper. And I have the Collier Grande. As you can see, it started up straight away. The nib is broad and the ink is SBRE Brown. Okay. I have found this to be a very pleasant nib, and by the way, the experience with the other 
uh, model, uh, sorry, the other pen, the um, Tortoise Lucite, very, very similar. They write well, consistent ink flow, not too wet, not too dry, just a very nicely tuned nib. Back in the day, Brian tuned all the nibs that left the Edison Warehouse. I don't know if that's still the case, but what I can say is these two pens both write very, very nicely. I've not had any skips. I've not had any hard starts. I've not had any issues. So that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. As I said, nicely tuned. I would say neither too wet nor too dry. Just very pleasant. As to line variation. This is not advertised as a flex nib, so be very careful. I do think you can squeeze out a little bit of line variation, but again, it's not a flex nib, so be very, very, very careful. Reverse writing is possible and is not particularly scratchy. I do think it would the nib is going to run dry, but you can certainly get away with a couple of words or symbols, and you take this broad to a good fine, maybe even an extra fine. So, I think this pen has a lot going for it. Pleasant writer, comfortable to hold, fun to play with. Let's talk about likes and dislikes. Okay, so what do I like, what do I not like about these pens? First of all, what was this, this backstory? The first time I met Brian and Andrea Gray was at the DC Pen Show in 2012 and I realized that's a decade ago. It's insane how, how time flies. And I purchased at that pen show, not directly from them, but from Anderson Pens, a Collier and Persimmon Swirl, which is this very finish. And uh, I, I, I loved it, but I also ended up selling it because at a certain point I just wasn't using it enough. Now, the, the particular story I wanted to share was that I'll try to keep it brief. At some point I broke the cap of my collier. It, it completely shattered because I dropped it and I stepped on it. It's one of those freak accidents that sometimes happens. I reached out to Brian. He said, well, I've changed that model a little bit, but measure the inside threads. I'll make you a new cap. And I said, okay. He did that. He actually sent me two, maybe even three caps and just said, you know, keep the one that fits best. I did. I asked him, when I had received all those caps, uh, uh, I asked him what I owed him and he said nothing. And I said, yeah, but I, I, like you, you put work in, I, I don't want to get this for free just because I'm a reviewer or whatever. He said, no, 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 but this is what I do for everyone. I want you to be happy with the pens and they have a lifelong warranty. And I think that was, that was really, really nice because it really shows that this is a company that really cares about the products that they sell and they want you to be happy. So. I wanted to share that as a story. Beyond that, Brian and Andrea are incredibly nice people. They, they really are super, super nice. And I think it's very nice to support a small business, especially when that business truly cares about customers. So I hope you'll forgive me that, that quick trip down memory lane. When I saw that there was a Collier Grande with a number eight nib, I thought it would be fun to, uh, to at least check it out for a review. And I, I've been very impressed. So now getting to my actual likes and dislikes, there's a lot I like about the pens. I'm just going to grab my notes just to have a quick look here. Um, I found the pens to be large. They're comfortable though. Uh, they are not obscenely huge. I mean, obviously it's, it's a large pen. It's an oversized pen. So if you like smaller pens, then maybe don't buy the Grande, but I'm assuming that speaks for itself. I found them to be large, but comfortable. The section that, that hourglass shape to me works very well in being very comfortable. So that I, I think is, is very nice. What other issues did I have? Uh, you can get it, of course, standard uh, uh, cartridge converter that's easy to use, easy to clean. Uh, and then you can also use it as an eyedropper, in which case you have a really big capacity, something in ways of five milliliters, which is a lot of ink. If you wish to get the draw filler like I did, it's $100 extra. To me, that was worth it because you get a whole different filling system that's a little bit fancier than cartridge converter. I will say this, it's a little bit harder to clean because drawing up ink is easy, but expelling it through this system is a little bit harder. Fortunately, you can just unscrew the section and then you have direct access to the barrel. You can use a syringe or whatever you prefer, even just holding it under a tap will clean it out really, really quickly. So I wouldn't have concerns about that. 
Brian sent me a message saying that he had tried one out with a draw filler for quite a while to see if it would burp. Uh, he did say something about you when when you get to the uh, the the sort of three milliliter uh, range, you could certainly start to experience burping. Um, he didn't experience it. I haven't experienced it. Now, it's certainly possible when these pens get more empty that there is some burping. In other words, that a drop of ink uh, will just the control leak of, of the fountain pen no longer is that control and a drop of ink just falls out, basically falls out of the uh, feed. It can happen. I haven't had it happen. It's mainly a risk when pens with a large capacity get emptier. The idea being that the heat from your hand transfers into the pen, makes the air expand a bit and pushes out a drop of ink. So any large capacity pen, I would just make sure you keep it pretty full. And doing that, I have not had any issues uh, with, with uh, these pens and, and burping. So that was not really an issue I had either. Um, as far as I'm concerned, for me, the, the dislikes, there, there aren't that many because I found it a very comfortable pen. I find the materials to be really attractive, really nice. You can pick whatever works best for you. Number 8 nib is very nice, ebonite feet. They write really nicely. Both of them have been very pleasant writers. So the only dislike I really have uh, is you can't post them, but I don't really care because I would say this is more than big enough to use unposted. If you really want to though, I'm sure Brian would uh, be happy to make you another cap that you can permanently super glue in place and then you have a posted pen. Um, and the other issue of course is it's not necessarily cheap. $325 for a steel nib pen, that's the standard cartridge converter. Another $100 for a draw filler like these, which you certainly don't have to get, but you, you might. That makes it a $425 pen and that's not cheap. Having said that, I don't think I have a real issue with that price, given that you are buying something from a smaller company that does not have five million of these churned out in a day, so to speak. Uh, there is a lot of handwork that goes into them with the polishing and all that stuff. You also, again, get a lifelong warranty, which I, I, I can't stress enough. That's not very common anymore in pen companies, so I think that's very nice. Everything is made properly, and if you have any issues, the Edison Pen Company will sort them out. I know this from experience, so I think that's another important thing to bear in mind. It's not cheap, but you do get a pen that will last you a lifetime, and if it does not, Edison will sort you out. So I think that's that's really all I have to say about that. To me, that would be worth the price. You do get a larger pen, you can pick your material, you can pick a nib. It's no gold at this point, it's only steel, but uh, you know, as I said, both of these nibs wrote really nicely. Ebonite feed is a nice bonus. That's it, that's really all I have. So I think they're very cool, very nice pens. Check them out if you are looking for something a little bigger that's made with sort of a personal touch, personal care. That's all there's to it. Brian, this one will come back to you. This one will not. <laughs> I'm not joking. Bye! Thanks for watching.